Hi everyone, this is Matan from Madero SQL Server Services and today I'd like to talk to you about the tail insert problem or in other words, excessive latching when working with descending keys. Before we start, a few words about me. My name is Matan Yungwan. I work for Madero SQL Server Services. We are a consulting company focusing on SQL Server and data in general. We're at MaderaSQL.com. I'm also on Twitter at Matan Yungwan and we also have a podcast called SQL Server Radio where me and Guy Glancer talk about everything you need to know about SQL Server. So traditionally, our classic clustered index key selection is as follows. We want our key to be narrow so that our clustered index and the non-clustered indexes which point to it will be as slim as possible. We want it to be static so that we don't generate fragmentation in the clustered index and we don't have to update the non-clustered indexes. And we want it to be ever increasing so that we don't generate a lot of page splits and fragmentation when we insert rows into the index, thus hurting performance. And for the vast majority of systems, this will be a very good choice. The problem is that from a certain scale, this isn't good enough. And here's why. Looking at the structure of the index, when we work with an ever-increasing key, all of the rows will go to the end of the index. And of course, this is what we want because we don't want to generate fragmentation, as we saw in the previous slide. But the problem is that all of the rows will go to the same page, which is the last page of the index. And when we want to insert rows into a page, we have to acquire something that is called a latch. A latch is a lightweight short-term synchronization object for in-memory objects. And when we want to insert a row into a page, we have to acquire a latch on the page so that other sessions don't change the page while I'm trying to insert the row into it. And from a certain scale, this becomes a big problem. And let's see that in the demo. So what we have here is a regular table with an identity column as the clustered index key. And you also have a stored procedure that inserts 10,000 rows into the table. And now from an external application called SQL Query Stress, we will execute the stored procedure from 10 threads. And this will take a few seconds, so let's fast forward to the end of the execution. And this took 49 seconds. Not very impressive, if you ask me. And if we look at this DM OS weight stats, we can see the problem. We have a lot of latch weights. And that's exactly the problem we saw in the previous slide. So what solutions do we have? Our first solution is to use in-memory OLTP tables. The in-memory OLTP engine uses latch-free data structures in order to prevent the problem that we just saw. And let's see that in demo too. So what we now have is an in-memory OLTP table and we will alter the store procedure to insert the rows into that table. And execute the store procedure again from 10 threads. And now the execution took only 9 seconds, much more impressive. And if you look at these DMOS weight stats, we can see that we don't have any latch weights at all. But what if you can't use in memory OLTP? Our next solution is to use a non sequential key in order to insert rows all over the index and not only at the end of it. So, what we now have is a table with a unique identifier column which gets a new random key each time. And we will alter the store procedure to insert the 10,000 rows into that table and execute the stored procedure again from 10 threads. And this run took 13 seconds, not as good as in memory LTP, but much better than our original state. The problem with this solution is that it generates a lot of fragmentation. If you look at SysDMDB index physical stats, we can see that we have almost 100% of fragmentation. And this is expected, of course, because each time we insert a row, it goes to another part of the index. But what if we build the index with a field factor of 10%? 
A full factor of 10% means the Drainer Rebuild Index if hit only 10% of the page and that way I basically bucketize the table allowing each inserted row to go to its designated page without generating page splits. And now after we rebuild the index, let's execute the stop procedure again for 10 threads. And this took almost the same amount of time as the previous execution, but this time we don't have any fragmentation at all. And that way we get the benefits of the two worlds. We both get fast inserts and no fragmentation. So as we saw, in addition to using a non-sequential key, we have the option to quote unquote bucketize the table. So some walls will go here, and some here, and here, and some here, and so on and so on. Our last solution is called hash partitioning. And this means that we partition the table, separating it to a few separate physical parts. And each time we insert a row to a different physical part of the table. So the first row will go to partition zero, and the next row to partition one, and then partition two, and then partition three, and so on and so on. And let's see that in demo two. In order to implement hash partitioning, we first create a partition function with a few ranges and a partition scheme. And we have a table which sits on top of that partition scheme, and our partitioning column will be hash ID, which in our case is ID modulo 10. And again, we'll execute the start procedure for ten, from 10 threads. And again, the execution time is 13 seconds, much better than our original state. So to summarize, the classic cluster Linux key selection will be good for the vast majority of systems. When you get to a certain scale, latches become a problem. And when you identify you have a latches problem, you need to start thinking about the solution. Using in-memory OLTP tables, using a non-sequential key and bucketizing, or using hash partitioning. If you'd like to learn some more SQL Server performance tricks, head over to maderasql.com/blog. Thanks for watching and see you next time.